folks, welcome to Vector Calculus. Hello folks, welcome to the next lecture on Vector Calculus. Now, today we're starting a new series of ideas and that is the quadric surface. Now, hopefully you remember the conic sections and uh, the quadric surfaces are a three-dimensional analogy of the conic sections. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Don't worry about the uh, the the difficult language. It's gonna be very nice very soon. So uh, let's start with a very simple surface. I got a bunch of surfaces right here. So let's see what our first surface is. Uh, I have I had totally no idea what surface would be first. These are all random. So here's my first surface. Um, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus z squared over c squared equals one. So let's put this over here to the side and let's think about what we have to do. So our goal is to kind of draw a picture, right? That's what we want to do at the end of the day. We want to make a picture that, uh, that helps us give an idea what this looks, what this surface looks like. This is obviously uh, something in three dimensions. Uh, who knows, is it like a well, I don't have any apt. Is it like a cylinder, like this expo marker? Is it a rectangular prism, like this eraser? Who knows? We'll figure it out. <coughs> now, the name of the game when it comes to three-dimensional surfaces is slices, right? Uh, what do I mean by slices? Well, to get an idea of how this 3D thing looks like, I'm gonna take slices of it. Uh, when you go to the doctor, and he takes your MRI, he doesn't open up your brain and look at what's inside of your brain, no. He takes uh, cross sections of your brain and then he tries to think, okay, these are the cross sections, what does the actual brain look like? Well, today we're gonna act like the doctor. We're gonna take cross sections of this 3D surface. Uh, we're gonna take a cross section of the XY plane, a cross section of the YZ plane, and a cross section of the XZ plane. And we're gonna kind of think, what do these three cross sections add up to? All right, so that's kind of our um, our methodology, if you will. So that's how I'm gonna be taking things, and let's go ahead and get started. So what's the first thing you should do? Well, <clears throat> this is obviously a 3D surface, right? So let, why don't we start by just drawing the X, Y, Z plane? I think that's uh, that's kind of the the first step. Or at least the easiest step we can take and of course my XYZ plane didn't get off to a good start uh, so let's let's see if we can make these lines straight all right so there's my XYZ plane all right so here's my uh, Y axis here's my X axis and here's my Z axis okay so so far so good so that's just kind of like this the setting right that's where all my um, surfaces are going to take place. What does my actual surface, what does this thing look like? Well, <clears throat> before we do anything, I think the, the best kind of non-math thing to do is just rewrite the equation here. We have x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared minus z squared over c squared equals 1. Now, by the way, if you're just coming in at this from geometry or something, you might think, hey, the only equation I saw was y equals x squared. That's a parabola. Well, don't be scared by this. Uh, inside of this complicated equation are a lot of simple things packed together. So we're going to find those simple things uh, very nicely. So I told you the name of the game when it comes to 3D surfaces are slices. But how do you actually take a slice? For example, if I have this kind of um, if I have this kind of a bowl-shaped figure, how would I take its slice? Well, all I would do is kind of take a plane, right? I would take a plane and I would have the plane cut this bowl. And so what would emerge, the cross section I'd say, is this kind of circle. So do you see that the cross section of this bowl is this circle, right? And of course, if you take different cross sections, you'll get different shapes, right? Sometimes I'll get a parabola, sometimes I'll get an ellipse. It all depends. It all depends. So, that's how you take a slice. 
you basically take a plane and you have you kind of take the plane and you slice the 3d thing and whatever two-dimensional shape pops up on the plane that's your cross section <clears throat> now that's kind of the geometric action we're taking we're taking a plane and we're slicing something that's the geometric action what's the what's the algebraic thing we're doing well when you take a plane you're basically setting a variable to a constant right so for example here we might be setting the variable z to a constant, I don't know, 1, right? If I set z to 2, maybe my plane would instead come up here. And instead, it would intersect a bigger circle, something like that, right? If I increase my z, I'll get bigger and bigger circles. So that's the idea. You kind of set one of the variables to a constant, and then you just see what shape you get, okay? <clears throat> so that's the approach you'll be taking now when I um, which variable should I set to a constant first well it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter and for the time being just to make our conversation simple I'm gonna let a B and C all equal one because why not you can complicate things when you're happy or when you understand it more so now what I'm gonna do is set one of the variables to a constant uh, it doesn't matter which one you set to a constant first. Let's why don't we set x to a constant? In fact, I'll let x be zero. I'll fix x to be zero. So where is x zero on this x y z uh, plane? Well, x is zero when you're looking at the y z plane, right? Do you see that? On this y z plane, x is zero, right over here. X is zero over here. X is zero over here. X is zero. You know, if you don't understand that. Just come over to the xy plane. Just look at the simple two-dimensional coordinate plane. Where is x0? On the y-axis. Same thing here. Where is x0? On the yz plane. Okay, same idea. Same idea. So, <clears throat> we're basically taking all the ideas we know in 2D and extending them, which is uh, very nice. So. Let's fix x to be 0. Let's let x be a constant. Let's let x equal 0. And what are we going to see? Well, if you make this 0, what you're left with here is y squared minus z squared is equal to 1. So what does this remind you of? y squared minus z squared equals 1. Well, that should remind you of a hyperbola, right? If you have a negative sign between the two terms, you got a hyperbola. But the complication is what type of hyperbola do you have? Because there's really two types of hyperbolas you could have. You could have an up and down parabola, oh, sorry, hyperbola, like this, or you could have a side-by-side -side hyperbola, like that. Now, to figure out which type of hyperbola you have, what I like to do is find the intercepts, right? I said y to zero, check it out. If I said y to zero for this hyperbola, what do I get? Said y to zero, and I'll be left with negative z squared is equal to 1. So z squared is equal to minus 1. There's no hope. There's no hope. This is a square. You can't let a square quantity be negative, right? So th th there's no, uh, this hyperbola doesn't even touch, doesn't even touch that part of the, uh, of the z axis, okay? How about the z intercept? If I set z to 0 instead, what happens? set z to 0 and you get y squared is equal to 1 right so y is equal to plus minus 1 where is that plus 1 is over here minus 1 is over here and boom now we know what our hyperbola looks like it's a side to side hyperbola right so now let's see if I can get this right this side to side hyperbola is going to be on the yz plane right it's going to be on the yz plane because I'm fixing my x variable right so let's see if i can get this side to side hyperbola right this is going to be an exercise in okay and how about the other one all right awesome so this is my side to side hyperbola very nice very nice so now i took a cross section of the x-axis uh of the yz plane and that's what i get i get a kind of hyperbola but I got two more variables that I can fix. So let's use them. Use them. Use everything you have. Right? Leave no variable wasted. Leave no variable behind. 
we already fixed x and we got a hyperbola on the yz plane let's fix y let's fix z let's see what we get so <clears throat> i'm gonna fix y now uh apparently i don't okay so i fixed y and what do i get well hit this to be zero pop it out and what do we get we get x squared over a squared minus z squared over c squared equals one now i said to make our conversation simple i'm just letting a b c be one so let's make matters simple so x squared minus z squared equals one and huzzah you got another hyperbola now what type of hyperbola is this you ask well same answer right if you find the x intercepts you'll find that x can either be plus or minus one right so what does that look like well we're looking at what plane if you're fixing y you're looking at the xz plane aren't you you're looking at the xz plane and x is plus minus one well check it out plus one is here minus one is here and so what does that look like are you ready are you ready for this xz plane so i'm gonna draw my hyperbolas kind of like that all right there's one all right there's two okay do you see that i got another set of side to side hyperbolas another set of side to side hyperbolas okay so final variable i fixed x i got a hyperbola on the yz plane i fixed y i got a hyperbola on the xz plane now i'm gonna fix z okay let's fix z what happens when i fix z well we're gonna pop this out pop out that term what do we get x squared plus y squared equals 1 and I think you are very happy because all of you know what this is this is a circle we have a circle so when you take a almost died but that's okay when you take a slice of the xy plane what do you get well you just get a circle here's a circle right but you might be thinking hey that's not the only circle i see well then you'd be right look at this equation again what if we didn't fix z to be zero but we just let z be a constant right if we just let z to be some constant c what would happen well check it out you'd be left with x squared plus y squared is equal to one plus z so as you move z up and down as you move z kind of up and down zero as you let z be positive this thing what does this thing become what does this thing become well it becomes more and more circles it becomes a bigger and bigger circle do you see that well hopefully you do because this is really what gives us this intuition so as you go up and up you get more and more bigger and bigger circles bigger and bigger circles so can you see that that right there is a the shape we have right so uh, this is almost like um let's see let's collect all of our all of our things together so let's review we plotted this equation we took its slices in three different ways number one we took its slice on the yz plane by setting x to equal zero and what did we find we found a hyperbola on the yz plane you see that hyperbola same story for y equals zero same story we fixed y we got another hyperbola this time on the xz plane and finally we fixed zero uh, for z and we got a circle we got a circle so we got two hyperbolas and a circle two hyperbolas and a circle and what do we call this well since you see the hyperbola a bunch of times we call it a hyperboloid but this is a good hyperboloid it's one hyperboloid it's one 3d surface so we call it a hyperboloid of one sheet if that if that explanation makes no sense check out the next lecture and you'll find a hyperbola that's actually cut in half and we call that a hyperboloid of two sheets so that's why um that's why we call it this name hyperboloid of one sheet so just to review <clears throat> what did we just do well we had a 3d equation it had three variables x y and z 
we wanted to know how it would look like on the 3d x y z you know uh, plane and what we did was we took slices we took a slice of the we took of the sli we took a slice of the surface this way through the x y plane we took a slice this way through the y z plane we took a slice this way through the x z plane so we took three different slices by letting x equal 0 y equal 0 and z equal 0 and after taking each of those slices we found a different conic section when we took a slice of the yz plane we found a hyperbola when we took a slice of the xz plane we found a hyperbola when we took a slice of the xy plane we found a circle now now you're like the doctor you have three different brain scans of the patient you gotta combine all of those brain scans here we have three different cross sections of the 3D surface. We gotta combine all those cross sections. And what do we get when we combine a hyperbola, hyperbola, and an ellipse? We get a hyperboloid of one sheet. And that's how it looks like. It looks kind of like a, an hourglass, if you will, right? So if you look at this, this is basically how our three-dimensional surface here looks like. It's almost like a nuclear power plant or a or an hourglass, if you will. Anyway, that's it for this lecture, folks, and uh, we'll check you out in the next one. Ian Betton plus MKO plus scaffolding equal learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that you too can become, can become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.